and start resume recording. Um, last week, uh, we learned the MNIST dataset and uh, um, it's essentially like a digit, handwritten digit. And we learned several uh, Python as keywords, for example, what is generator, what is iterator, and all of these things will be quite handy um, if we want to be a data scientist, uh, if we want to like uh, dedicate a significant amount of our time in writing code, then um, in writing Python code, quality Python code, then these are some uh, handy tools um, we would like to use. Um, and today, today, based on the feedback from the homework uh, and Piata, um, Piata office hour, etc., um, I decided to, you know, share some of uh, the tips of myself. I mean, of how do we debug a for loop? Um, for example, especially in the cell environment. Um, Normally myself, I'm writing like a script and then I can write some JavaScript like JSON file for, um, for debugging, but uh, it's not always possible. For example, especially in this um, cell coding environment. Um, then um, I would like to share some of uh, uh, my tips. Um, the other one is um, for the homework, for example, a good habit is not only, not only we keep, like we submit a homework uh, to the, um, the Grayscope. The other is we, of course, we have worked the homework, right? And like 100%, Sometimes we do not know how to do perform a task with Google. And uh, the thing is, the next time, if we don't keep our solution like indexed, let's say if we don't keep our file or say some of our solution handy, we will forget them. And next time we have to Google the same thing and we wonder, oh, I mean, last time I Googled this, but uh, somehow I can't get the same result. And uh, I have to traverse a list of Stack Overflow answers to get things down. And my experience, my own experience as a coder coding for 10 plus years is I myself, I just keep a list of like common utilities um, files. So like common solutions, for example, read and write files. Um, and other manipulations, etc. Okay, so that's uh, that's some uh, thing I want to talk about before we start. And this is uh, this is uh, uh, today's plan. So today first, um, I think I didn't got the chance to cover the F string last time. Um, so this is the first thing um, I want to cover. Next is uh, try and accept. So try accept is a uh, is a very commonly used flow control in uh, data science applications. Um, next one is I want to talk about the coding homework. Um, is how do we do matrix vector multiplication and how do we make sure our matrix vector multi multiplications we perform uh, are correct. Okay. And next is uh, I want to talk about the last problem in the coding homework. So uh, how do we do uh, backward, this backward computation? And lastly is, so I share like a block of code uh, down below, like it's a manual uh, computation for uh, gradient descent, all right? So by the way, if we would like to um, perform like the computation, at the same time with the lecture, I just uh, send the link of this notebook in chat. Um, so again, uh, 
we have this open in collab and if uh, we just open in collab uh, it will open up an instance in collab so uh, so this is a link links in the chat okay all right so let's start um, first let's import all the necessary um, packages here I add one more uh, this warning is um, sometimes you know when our operations the PyTorch doesn't quite like it but still when through it it will show lots of warnings so uh, if we want to if we don't want to see these warnings uh, we can just uh, import warnings and we just filter the all the warnings okay so the first one is f string what f string is let me first uh, uh add a code here f string the definition of f string is for example if we have a string this is a string all right and uh and the f string is we add an f in front of uh, um, the string so in python 2 it's something like this okay so this is in python 2 let me uh it's kind of i don't know i don't quite like python 2 syntax so for example this is an f string in that we can add the parentheses here then we put a format here um and we do a bunch of things for example uh, 23.blah-blah-blah and we can put a, some format here for example we only keep the 2f and uh, if we do this we'll get 23.33 so um, as we can see here the 2 the dot so uh, the column means format the dot means the radix and two means we only keep uh, two digits of the floating. And in Python 3, this has been much simplified. Okay. So in Python 3, what we do is we simply add an F and we see like in our homework, we see this type of syntax. So for example, we do F, this is an F string. And what we do is we can set x to be we just copy down this number so x equal this we just do x and we use this curly bracket to denote that uh, x is some variable so for example we can specify the x's format to be dot to dot for this f it means we just print uh the x like four digits after the decimal so let's try it so as we can see um so this is a this is what an f string in python is and um i mean this will become very handy so so example of a timer is for example we can time things and we can print the result like uh in the homework one um, so this will become one of our arsenal of um like keep track of things and debugging and stuff for example what we have is we can import time uh, import time um, okay and then uh, let's import time from time okay oh, sorry so bad from time import time uh, let's import the time function and after we import the time function, for example, we can put start time, we just put the time. And uh, for example, we can uh, just benchmark our for loop, which we don't like. So for example, we do, uh, we do, we just do uh, X plus equal one, okay. And after that, we want to print how many time has passed. What we can do is we can use a single line of code. We can do this. So print, we use F string, okay? And what we can do is 
we do time elapsed we put a parenthesis here and we just we just enter so whatever function right here in the curly bracket we want to compute for example it's what we want to do is we want to compute the end of time of this for loop so we just do time so we can call functions like this and then subtract start seconds All right if we run this line of code we'll see that instead if we print something, you know, like this string, it will show literally what this string is. But if we do this, it will show uh, the execution, the evaluation of the function subtract this guy. So as we can see, uh, point zero zero one has passed. This for loop is fast because uh, we don't like, um, ac we don't try to access a big matrix. So that's why it's fast. But uh, in general, we should avoid for loop. The other is we want to print counter of iterations. What we can do is, for example, this is a review of enumerate. So for example, what we can do is for index, okay, an item in enumerate. For example, we have a list and this list is apple, uh, pear, orange, So what we can do is if we want to print um, a sentence and I an item in the same line, we can what we can do is we use F string. So for example, we can do index is I and uh, uh, the item is item. So what happens is at each iteration, I will display here, an item will be displayed here. So let's see. So as we can see, uh, this is a result. And this is, uh, this is how we use an F string. Uh, next, um, I mean, if we have learned Python, we must be very familiar with this F string. And I wanna say F string is uh, very, handy it will become our like very handy tool the other is i think i have defined x my bad so let's do y the other is try and accept okay the other is try and accept and i think i have y as well let me try to do x1 the other is try and accept and we have seen uh, try and accept um, in our homework, but I haven't explained. I haven't explained uh, what try and accept is. Uh, but uh, since there is no problem, like essentially dependent on this, but uh, but we're still gonna learn this one because try and accept is extremely useful if we wanna like doing collaborations with other coders we all have our setup and uh, sometimes in a collaboration of codes for example you go to you know a company uh, you try an internship and we have a group project and we all have our coding setup so if we run you know our code on our local machine sometimes it gives us error how do we like avoid, you know, running into errors, um, but still like maintain um, our local routine. So, um, and try and accept will become super handy. And if we do, um, I mean, if we go to a, got an internship and we, you know, do a group project, we'll see. So for example, X1 does not exist, all right? The name X1 does not exist and then the execution, okay. The execution stops because whatever happens, even we add a valid, even we add a valid, for example, X is defined, X1 is not defined. Even we add a valid, 
like whatever function or expression after this one, it won't get executed. All right. This line won't get executed. So the execution stops, and this line won't, uh, and this line won't get executed. Okay, and this is this is some sometimes very disastrous in some real life applications. Let's say if we go to a company and we do a group project, and the code is being running on cloud for like let's say twelve hours, and suddenly because we have imported some of our local package, we have this name error or whatever error. The code stopped running. Wow, that our coworker must be like will be mad, and we may lost our job. So, the simplest solution to this problem is we add this try except block. Okay. So what we can do is we do this try, right? What we try is, and remember this. Namely, every literal like Python function has its literal meaning. For example, if we do try, it's literally we first we try this. Okay, if this line of code cannot be successfully executed, and we jump to another block, we do this. Okay, like we said earlier. X one does not exist. The execution of this block of code will give us error. Okay. Um. So this line won't be executed. Imagine we have run, you know, the the code twelve hour in straight, and uh, suddenly we get this error. To avoid it, is we use this block. So we try this first. If this is unsuccessful, we try. Uh, then then uh, we just. Execute this. So let's let's run this cell. So as we can see, X will get printed. This line just got ignored, right? And the good thing about try except is if this is successful, it will execute this. So let's try another block. Okay. So for example, if we try print X and except. And we can raise some error. So,、um, for example, if this is not exist, we can raise certain something. We can raise. So this is a keyword as well. So raise name error. Okay. So for example, whoops. So variable does not exist. So if we try this. This line will get executed because uh, uh, X exists in our memory.、Um, if not, let's try X one.、Um, the error, the error message will be something we like.、Uh, we customized, for example. So variable does not exist, and writing an error message is also very important in doing a collaboration project. Which we'll see. I mean, we'll do a collaboration final project, but uh, uh, even though it's only a two-person project, but uh, still, um, this is an important skill of you know come up with an error message um, that is informative to our teammate. Um, and、uh, for example, this is a this is a, our you know like customized、uh, error message, and this is default Python error message. Actually, it's better because.、Uh, It tells us which variable it does not exist. So like, let's change this to X and、uh, again. So now、uh, it gets this line. So next, I、uh, I want to talk about how do we debug、uh, for loops.、Um, I think I got this question、uh, from Office Hour. So.、Um, And this line of code is the common loading、uh, MNIST dataset. So we load MNIST dataset. I have already loaded it, and uh,、um, 
and this is a homework code where we retrieve everything that's uh, uh, with the target eight. Okay, I think uh, some here. If Python complains, what we can do is we can do this. Okay, and then. We just a sample, so this we randomly sample ten of them, and uh, we just so we randomly sample ten of them and uh, to become our data new here. So this is our data new, and uh, for example, if we print the zero entry, okay, uh, we'll see our eight right here. So we can change this to one or whatever. So, for example, three. Uh, this is another eight, and we have totally ten of them. So let's plot uh, the index nine, and this is another eight. Okay. So in the homework, there there was a problem. There was a problem asking us to vectorize this code. Okay. And uh, um, we have several lines of code. Um, and in, I mean, in reality, for example, if we go to a coding interview uh, for a company, um, normally this is like a, um, the lines of code will be much more. For example, we'll have several blocks of code and asking us to dissect the code. Um, and sometimes these type of coding interview, coding interview will even be online, for example, we are exactly in the coding environment like this, and uh, we are asked to debug some code in real time. Okay, so how do we handle that? How do we debug or say, how do we dissect a for loop? The best way, so first let's run this line of code, it go through, okay, so it means the for loop has been successfully executed. How do we debug? bucket, the answer is we copy this line of code. We use a break keyword, okay? For example, um, we are in a for loop and we know that n samples is 10 right here. So for example, it's 10 right here. If we want to debug it, we don't want to execute all 10 iteration. We hit break. Break means if the code gets executed at this line, um, we just break out of this for loop and this for loop is done and we don't continue to execute it. So now the other way, uh, the other one is, let's look at this. So this, so X1 gets, so for example, X, X1 gets an assignment at each iteration gets an assignment at uh, each iteration, right? So right here, because uh, we have I here, so it gets an assignment at each iteration. So instead of assign X1, we just name it like X1 temp. And we want to figure out what each iteration our code does by looking at, at each iteration, what the output is. So let's try that. And for example, we want to print I. So I is zero, all right? Why I is zero is because after the first iteration, the for loop is broken and uh, we do not have, we do not have any more loops executed. So, and let's try to do what's the sample. So for data scientists, like I said earlier, the important skill is to tracking dimension. So let's first check the size of every variable uh, involved. For example, uh, we have this sample right here. And then we have this W0. So let's print W0 size. And then we have W0 T size. 
Okay, let's print these three first to give us an idea of what happens. So for example, uh, the sample size is 784 by one. It's like a 784 by one vector. And uh, we'll be pretty much doing 784 this number, you know, in the rest of our semester. Um, because uh, our final project will also be in the format of MNIST, but a different data set. Um, so it's going to be 28 by 28 grayscale image. And W is uh, W0 is 784 by 196. And this T means transpose. Okay, so W0.T means transpose to a vector. But in the end, like uh, like I emphasized earlier, getting a good editor is good. So for example, um, if we have a good editor, sometimes it will tell us what a W0.T is. Like, uh, and it's a transpose. And next is we wanna print after that. So for example, after we perform this operation, what is x1 temp size? So x1 temp is 196 by one. This operation right here, this operation right here, essentially we transform the sample from a 784 by one vector to a 196 by one vector. Okay, so that's what we uh, have done right here. And next, if we want to vectorize this, okay, so if we want to vectorize this, um, the first thing is we want to check x2 size. So this block of code got executed and x2 is our output. So for example, x2 size is uh, should be 10 by 14 by 14. Um, the 10 right here, the first one is uh, 10 is the number, essentially 10 is uh, 10 is the number of samples. And 14 by 14 is our downsized, uh, like downsampled, image size. And we want to write, we want to write, we want to write kind of a three lines of vectorized code to rewrite um, this, basically the for loop into one iteration. The idea is dimension tracking. Uh, for example, um, the first one is we resize or we reshape x2, x1, sorry. So x1, let's print the x1 size. So x1 uh, size, which is right here. Okay. So so x1 size is um, 190, I believe it's 10 by 196. Oh, okay, so it's 10 by 196 by one. Uh, if we resize it or reshape it into this, it's basically, it's like a long vector, all right? Being reshaped into a square matrix. So it's pretty much like, uh, let's give an example. So torch a range, uh, for example, if we do nine, uh, we have zero to A, right? Um, but uh, if we do torch a range nine view three, three, essentially we get uh, this a square matrix uh, that is uh, has total nine entries 
And this line of code, this line of code is doing the same. And the first minus one, the first minus one is uh, the minus one in the first dim is, is we just want to keep, is just keeping um, the number of samples unchanged. So we, we, we just, we don't track the number of samples because this dimension denotes a number of samples. We don't want to track number of samples by hand. Instead, we would let the torch determine how many samples are there. Okay. Now let's just write a single line of code um, to perform this for loop. Actually, the answer is, uh, is not very difficult. So let's first look at x0 and let's print x0 as well. So x0 is 10 by 28 by 28. The first step, the first step is we view x0 by 28 by 28, okay, and one. So this one is not necessary, um, but uh, I mean, we can try that. So let's first try without this one. If we do this, x zero, so right here, it says tensor with shape 10, 28 by 28. Uh, we have totally 10 samples, and each one is a 28 by 28 matrix. We'll get resized to still 10 samples, minus one keep the number of samples unchanged, and we will get each sample getting in back to, for example, if we copy this line of code and we do view minus one, it will be straightened to a long vector. Again, this is square matrix, okay? So the same thing happens here. The 28 by 28 uh, matrix will become a vector. So this is the first step, okay? The second step is we wanna get X1 just in one lines of code. And so X1's desired dimension is this, okay? It's either 10 by, so it's either, it's either 10 by 196 or 10 by 196 by one, okay? So that's X one's desired dimension. Let's put it on here um, as a placeholder. And we know that, we know that W's dimension, okay? We know that W's dimension is, uh, I'm sorry, W zero's dimension is this, okay? What happens is we want to get a vector out from x1, uh, which is so x out from x0. So this will become 1, 784. We want to use a matrix of 10, 784 and a matrix of 784 by 196 to produce something like 10, 196. If we formulate this problem clearly, we'll see the answer just lies in the dimension. For example, so if we do matrix multiplication of what 10, 7, 84 matrix, matrix multiply with 7, 84 by 196, we essentially will get a 10 by 196. All right, because uh, this dimension got canceled. So as we can see, once we list out all the dimension, the answer just lies in the dimension. 
So it's just X matrix multiplication with W. And that's it. That's that simple. And then we do X2. Um, it's X2. Uh, yeah. So we just do X2. Uh, where was it? Okay, so X2. And uh, um, we do X1. U minus 1. 14 by 14. And let's print x2 size and x2 will become a 10 by 14 14 vector okay mm, okay so um somewhere i got wrong all right this is a very nice this is very nice so let's debug it together okay so for example Let's try where we get wrong. So for example, X1, um, I think it's W0, my bad. Yeah, it's W0, I named the wrong variable. So it should be W0, okay. And we obtained X2 correctly, okay. So it's a typo, and sometimes it's very hard to spot the typo, actually. Uh, but uh, I mean, I, I, I've been debugging my own code for 10 plus years. So, uh, but for if we do not know, for example, if I happen to put W here, and if we happen to put the wrong variable here, and uh, And uh, um, if we put a variable here and we got this uh, runtime error saying this is wrong, what we would like to do is we do some backtrack. So we do some backtrack and we print x1 uh, size. So for example, X1 is only 10 by one. It means somewhere, you know, some must be wrong here. So let's print like X zero size and W size. And for example, X1 size is this, X10, X zero size is correct, but W size is kind of wrong, right? So because we desire W dimension is this and uh, so it means we must get the wrong W because uh, I made a typo, it should be W zero. I mean, this is how we debug our code, but... Uh... All right. And here, um, for those of us who haven't learned um, like 449 last semester, um, the best way uh, like we learned in the 449, the best way to apply a function uh, is to use this object-oriented way. So for example, uh, if we want to retrieve the mean, if we do, for example, let's do x mean. Okay, uh, let's try not to do x. Yeah, let's let's use x, so x1. Um, if we do the mean without any input we'll get just one number okay so this is this is uh we just add up all the entries in this matrix and we take average a more common a more common way of doing the mean is we do along the axis so for example uh if we set the dim to be one okay we essentially we average out the dim one and we'll get uh like only dim zero. So for example, X1 originally, come on. So X1 is originally a tensor with size 10 by 196. If we take mean with respect to axis one, it means the axis one will be gone. What's left is only axis zero. That's why we get uh, 10 numbers here. And this is a more common way of uh, doing things and uh, we, we have mean, sum, add, subtract, square, and many things. But uh, um, 
we can apply function in this way. So next is uh, um, I want to talk about uh, homework. This is a problem. A problem four. Sorry, in homework two, coding. Uh, homework two. So this is a code that's given. If we read all the lines of code, uh, these are the end samples, and uh, essentially this is our x zero. Okay. Um, so it is uh, our data new is 10 by 28 by 28. So we resize it into a 10. So it minus one is keeping track of the number of samples. Uh, we have number of samples and uh, uh, the, each sample has dimension 784. Uh, so this is our X and this is our Y. Um, so we made it up. Um, and this is our weight matrix, and we don't have any um, bias for simplicity. And our matrix, weight matrix is 784 by one matrix. And then this right here is our loss function. And then we use back propagation and we take, uh, uh, and we find our gradient. So this is like a full, um, this is like preparation for gradient descent. And the question is to, we want to code backward explicitly uh, by this formula. Um, I think I got two questions uh, from us on this question, uh, especially um, how do we know when to use uh, this asterisk and when to use um, the matrix vector multiplication. So I think that's a case by case study. Um, so for example, right here, what we want to track is the first thing we want to track is um, the dimension of the right hand side. Okay the dimension of the right-hand side must be equal to the dimension of the left-hand side. And the left-hand side dimension, if we take gradient with respect to W, uh, the shape of this gradient must be the same with uh, this one. So now let's look at a simple example of how do we perform the back prop uh, in uh, Torch using this simple example. So. This can be viewed as an element-wise uh, loss function. So for example, um, this is Z and uh, um, this is like, uh, uh, Z is like our neural network. This is like the simplest one. And then we take derivative, we'll get this. And what we wanna do, what we can do is we use uh, torch to simulate this case. So for example, we can have our Z we basically, we do torch rand m 10 and uh, uh, requires grad is false. Okay. Uh, let's do torch manual seed um, 42. And uh, I mean, this 42 here is like a common data science seed referencing to some, I think Star Trek or anything, but uh, we are perfectly fine to change the C to anything we like. So, um, I mean, it's not like required using this 42 and we generate Y as well. Uh, let's just do uh, requires grad equals false. I think we had a typo right here. It's random. And then our loss function, um, sorry, this, this should be X. Um, so how many we have in X? I think 10, right? So we have this 10 by, um, mm, Uh, 
Okay, let, 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 let's do this simple one. So we have this 10. And W is the thing we want to take gradient. Let's generate as well. Uh, we can generate zeros. Okay, so 10. And requires grad equals true because W is the function we want to take derivative of. And then our last function is nothing but, whoops. Our last function is nothing but uh, f is uh, is w mm x minus y, and then we take square. So uh, we can use this, the power function. So for example, um, we do this. So it's literally uh, equivalent to this, but um, this is a PyTorch built-in function. And lastly, we do f backward. Okay, so self must be your matrix of sum. Um. All right, so I, I'll stop here. Um, and on Monday, I'll continue to talk about this example, which is uh, like a simplification of what happens in the homework. And uh, if you have some quick question, uh, you're welcome to stay here and ask. So I'll stop recording here.